And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us all the way from Zade Studios, creators of the upcoming R RPG Beckoned. The one and only Jeremy Theveno. How are you doing today, man? Hello, Mildred. How are you doing? I am do I am doing good. It 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 it's only Thursday and yet it feels like Friday. I have no idea why. Well, it's because we're gonna be partying tonight, right? You said <laughs> this was the bar of the internet. Let's do this. Yeah, that's that tends to be how it goes. One last beer before we head to Valhalla. Uh, skull. Um, so uh, it's a bit of a tradition to open with the humble beginnings, and since since Beckend is very is very clearly taking its inspiration from console style RPGs, um, mm -hmm. I'm cu I'm curious as to what was your gateway drug into that particular um, style of play. Well, in 1994, uh, my buddy and me were pretty young kids. I'm, I'm thirty, gonna be 35 this year, so I was probably about like 12, something like that. Uh, and we were playing uh, the old like Final Fan. Well, about like 96, we were playing like Final Fantasy VI, mm -hmm. Chrono Trigger, and before that, I was I had never played an RPG before. Uh, I was a big into the Peter Pan lore growing up with, with all that and the plays my, my family had all those. And then the dark, dark eighties fantasy movies, like never ending story, the dark crystal labyrinth. Um, those, uh, those fantasies just kind of like, because they were a little bit darker in tone, they stuck in my head and, uh, the textures, the colors, the, the animatronics and the puppetry rather than the CG mm -hmm. uh, that we got later. All that stuff kind of stuck with me. And I, I played video games on the Sega Genesis, like Hook, the platformer. Barely anyone ever talks about it. On the Sega Genesis, it has great music. Uh, but that's when I looked at the graphics. And I had always been coloring before then. Um, <clears throat> always drawn Superman and everything. Mm -hmm. and, and so... I saw these graphics and I'm like, I want to make game graphics. I told my dad that when he, you know, he was on the couch. So years went by and <clears throat> my friends and I continued. Uh, we got into Final Fantasy VII and, you know, finally we beat Chrono Trigger. <laughs> you know, we finally started learning how to beat these things. All the while we were doing tabletop RPGs like Rollmaster. Not so much Dungeons and Dragons, but the old Rollmaster. Roll that you you are yeah. a man after my own heart. I see. Yes, <laughs> yes. I have my I have my uh, first edition right next to me underneath my game Bible. <laughs> so I love the system, and we we basically got so used to it where, it, it, and it's open ended. Once you understand how the how Rollmaster plays, you just have, need a piece of paper, pen, and a ten sided die, you know, and just go wild. So I have. Uh, I've gone. I've gone to bat for Rollmaster a few a few times, largely because I am. Um, I'm of I'm of the opinion that it's it's one of the it's one of those systems that it isn't as it isn't as complicated or as crunchy as people think it is. It's no, more it's, it's more of an issue of it's it's not, even, it's not even it's not even percent it's not even percentage based in this in the way that um in the mm -hmm. way that one would think is keep in mind. Um, Rollmaster started out as a hack of AD and D that got out of control. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the the details the, in every item and all the stats. Yeah, and, the issue yeah. the issue ultimately is presentation because, and I've I uh, mentioned this a while back when I did my review of um, Merp, mm -hmm. which is basically a simplified version of Rollmaster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is the fact that in those in those days, there was still a lot of the wargaming DNA. So instead of a instead of building around a unified mechanic and all roads lead to Rome approach, you had a series of subsystems because that's how it used mm -hmm. that's how it works with a lot of war games. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I played a lot of uh, the Warhammer twenty k forty k or 
40k 40k back uh, when i was doing the roll master stuff mm-hmm. too at this comic book shop i'd roll up to so yeah i mean i got that was my first taste at like war gaming you know uh particularly my first bit was roll master and then like to learn that it, it you know derives from original you know old 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 war gaming you know that's uh it was it yeah, keep going. I'm yeah, sorry. You dumb. <laughs> I'm reminiscing. <laughs> not to not to sound like I'm not to sound like I'm playing it too obvious, but you'd probably you'd probably get a kick out of against the Dark Master since that's base. It's basically a more modern take on that same system. And against, can you say that one more time? Against the Dark Master. Okay, um, gotcha. And in the interest of full disclosure, I will note that the guy behind it is a is a is a friend of the temple and. Um, he, I will check it out. He ha- he has admitted that he has he wears his metalness on his sleeve, so <laughs> there you go. Awesome. There. But, awesome. Um given given that particular generation that you started with, with, with some of the games, I have to wonder if you had if you had suffered through the Genesis version of the of Aladdin and the Lion King just like I did. Yes, 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 yes. And yeah, I mean um, back when I was a lot younger, emulation wasn't so frowned upon. And so just finding like the right versions when your Sega burnt out was a hard thing. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, like the differences between the two were kind of heartbreaking, like artistic and control wise, <laughs> you know, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's what you mean. Yeah. Well, the, well, there's the fact that for some reason, the Genesis versions were a lot harder and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've never, I've never got, I've never gotten a straight answer as to wh- as to but, why. But the, the Lion King as well, I believe they were uh, developed at, by two different studios, but at the same time. And... That is, that is true. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because I, th- from now, it's been a while, so, so, and I'm pretty sure someone will correct me about this later. But I think the, I think um, the. SNES Aladdin was developed by Capcom, and the um, Genesis version was developed by um, Virgin. I think. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that you're right on that. I was going to say the Williams, but that was uh, NBA Jam. So yeah, uh, I think you got it on the Virgin one. Um, but it's got, it you. is it is interesting that you that um that you bring up that you bring up though that you bring up um. FF6 and um, and Chrono Trigger, mm-hmm. especially given the combat system that you guys are going with within yeah. um, within the game, because when I when I first saw when I first saw clips of it and when I first dived into the um, proof of concept myself, mm-hmm. in a weird way, I was I was reminded of um, the Saga series. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I've heard a lot about that. Yeah, I've, I've had a few people get reminded of that, uh, as well as Fantasy Star. Uh, mm-hmm. particular, I think like three or four. Uh, I've heard Pro- a lot probably, of people. Probably four. Nobody likes three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, but then I, I got to be real honest that, uh, of course, there's some artistic reasons why I chose to do it this way, but I really loved Chrono Cross, mm-hmm. and that's going to gain a lot of hate. But not in, I not really in this temple, like... you're not going to get that hate. Okay, cool. I know that <laughs> game front and back, man. <laughs> so, like, uh, I, I know both games pretty well. I own books about their game design and how, how uh, it, you know, they broke them down. I mean, Chrono Trigger is a 12-hour, you know, focused game. Like, its side quests aren't fluffy. It's everything is character built and character driven. And that's kind of what I wanted Beckon to be is something that it ain't going to be a 40 hour game. It, you know, I'm wanting it to run pretty focused because we're a small team. Uh, it's, we're just two guys, you know, mm-hmm. I'm doing all, all the visuals that you see, all the branding, all the internet work, all the interviews, all the animation, the concept world building, the writing, and my brother's pro coming up behind me, taking these abstract ideas I'm throwing at him mm-hmm. and these plans and notes and skills you know, charts and logic, you know, uh, diagrams. And, you know, he ends up just building it and getting it to work enough to, for us to put out that prototype. And we need uh, we need a specialist of Unreal under the hood to come up behind and kind of allow us to rebuild the system with 
all of the bells and whistles we wanted to. But based off of everybody's feedback that we've been getting from this one, I mean, it is a new system. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, how do you feel about it, if you don't mind me asking? Um, the 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 only the only um the only th <laughs> the only thing the only thing that i um that i had that i had even this they had a slight issue with was not was um not knowing what not no not having enough um signposting when it came to turn breaks the mechanic right, where right, right, where right, right, pr right. where proper defenses can allow you to ca to counter attack um, yeah so Currently, right now, it's based on how many blocks you do in a roll. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to we want to actually mature that to a time based system of like you block too early, too you know too too late or perfect, and then of course the perfect would you would would cause that uh, turn break to happen. And uh, there's other mechanics we want to put in into not only just the attacking when you're running up and attacking in different directions. Uh, we want to put combo abilities there, much like how fighting games, you could put mm -hmm. in a combo and it would do a special move. Uh, those would all be skills that you're raising and gaining uh, while you're uh, leveling your characters. And, but as well for the turn break, uh, depending on the direction you're blocking a defense from, if you have it, your, uh, your counter combo uh, special equipped on that, you know, on that character at that time for that block, yeah, you can do counter abilities and combos as well. Yeah, uh, that's where we're wanting to drive the <laughs> drive the truck. So for for me, it's a, for me it's a case of whichever way you, whichever way you do it, I'm fine with. Mm -hmm. The importance is um, some sort of visual signposting that yeah. it does it doesn't have to be a gauge per se, but just some but just something to give just something to give that kind of feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, um, I, I, we 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 talked about it being uh, kind of a blend of kind of how you read punch out enemies. Like you mm -hmm. will watch them move and read the enemy's body language. That would be kind of key to understanding how to how to judge their speeds or what direction they're moving from. And it is managing three directions. So uh, we were kind of being a little punishing with how quick they they anticipate their attack but again i think uh we set it to a rhythm like once you get it to a rhythm mm -hmm. that's fine but when it scales out different enemies different rhythms you know so we're we're paying attention to how people are responding to it and really getting some good ideas on how to yeah. how to mitigate the um, the discomfort that it gives but to intensify that that uh that uh, sense of urgency and given Given that, given um, that, given that, um, mm -hmm. I think some, <clears throat> some now when it come now when it came to the vast majority of the um, of the pro of the uh, proof of concept that you had, um, a lot of times it was it was rooted it it was rooted in um so in solo combat. Yes. And yes. yes. Something I'm cu something I'm curious about is given the given the whole initiative point um, method of, method of turn order that it mm -hmm. that to me is is giving is giving me Grandia flashbacks. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that game. <laughs> is is it a case where you're is it a case where you're where um, attacking and defending is mainly going to be done through your um, through through um, Tauj or it? Your protagonist, or is it going, or is it going to be a case where the others are going to be doing attacking and, de and defending just as much? So, in this prototype, if you do get to the end of the prototype, um, I don't want to ruin it, but I, I'm not because it is an experience. I want everyone to see it. You uh, you win three battles, and uh, you'll hear a scream and go check the gate, and then the gate will give you a hint. You got to go find an item to unlock the gate uh the item comes in two parts once you complete it uh and you run and go through the gate you'll get this uh sort of surprise and the surprise is the other two characters do jump in but yeah we weren't able to make them um <laughs> playable right now because again we've uh we built the prototype in two years uh just exploring at it building it from the ground up there was no books on telling us how to do this perspective or, I mean, you can look at tutorials, but they only give you little nuggets. Mm -hmm. 
And I've had this vision in my head since those old RPGs that use the pre-rendered backgrounds. And just like I was talking about the game Hook, when I saw those graphics, I was like, I want to draw those. And so when I saw pre-rendered backgrounds back in the day, I was like, those are some amazing artists. And now that I'm a game developer, I'm like, yeah, they're great artists, but they're working off of like pre, like their structure that they're painting on top of. And it, it makes it believable and, you know, makes it look so amazing. So I really, since I, I'm a traditional artist coming from Savannah College of Art and Design and I'm turning my artwork into game stuff, I really just wanted to paint a world or draw a world and have you play through it. Uh, but I wanted it to feel like a double A you know, game, even though it's indie, you know, I, I wanted it to have the full life. And I've been working on the lore building of Beckend since high school. Mm -hmm. So growing up with Rollmaster and exercising that off the cuff imagination with my buddies, uh, I was, you know, we just, uh, me and him, me and one, in you know, particular, we were just like, let's, let's write some cool stories. We loved Lord of the Rings. We loved the, uh, you know, fantasy books and we would walk, wander out and play in the woods and stuff. And so it was kind of, he was working on more spacey futuristic concepts. And I was kind of the Gaia punky earth child, <laughs> you know, love, you know, kind of kid. So uh, as we were both kind of developing our own ideas, you know, life happens, but I've always used the concept of, I can build a world like in Hitchhiker's Guide to Ga of the Galaxy. If I just have the imagination, I could draw it all. And I did. That's what I've been doing my whole life. It got it got me into college off of a scholarship. But uh, they rose tuition. I wasn't able to finish after, you know, two years. But I came out and hit, hit it hard with being an artist and pushing myself, learning new stuff, particularly digital art. And so, yeah, Beckon comes from my childhood dreams of playing these games and being like, I want to make something too. <laughs> so um, that's that's where this is. We have a two and a half, three year development plan. Now that it took us those two years uh, to build this, I was working for, uh, I've been working on this for four and a half years. Uh, getting all the game plan working, getting all the mechanics working after I left my last job. Mm -hmm. um, I got everything started laying out. I got the business set up. I got all the taxes going. Everything's, you know, on the good and good. But I was having a problem finding a programmer. You know, I was uh, in contact with our local indie dev group in Orlando, uh, Indie Nomicon. And that was going good. The guys up there know me. They saw my game Bible and they called me the guy with the grimoire. Uh, I brought my ta my uh, sculpture that I that I sculpted of our main character out there too. And they just they were like, "Who are you? What did you do? <laughs> like, how, how are you planning this? You know, because I've got schematics and everything broken down, and uh, it, it, I just felt like a weird alien popping in out there. But those guys were great, and they still been great. But then of course COVID comes around and knocks everything out. So no more monthly meetings, but we're all still in contact. But mm -hmm. um. Yeah, so they've been watching me come up through this uh, with this game, and now they're like, holy crap, man, yeah, keep going, keep going. But, yeah, it was hard finding anyone who wanted to bite on it so much more, that or, or so much hard. So I visited my brother in Texas and showed him what I was doing, and he was like, what's this Unreal Engine? So we installed it real quick, and I had some sprites and everything uh, for a test for a programmer in my Google drive. And so I just signed in, pulled it down and in six hours. He had my Sprite running around a test environment. So I was like, you want to do this? He was like, that was fun. So, like, okay. So for, you know, the next two years, we explored this system and on our YouTube channel, you can kind of go back all the way to what our very early systems were looking like. And even the early battle system. And I mean, it's just him. He has a day job that he works all the time. So I'm the only one full time at it. And uh, I'm mainly just designing and structuring ways to improve the visual ways to improve the mechanical, how to tell the story pace wise, how's the game broken up. I've got a chart finally, finally finished. It's got all, everything in it scaled out all the way to the end of the game. 
So having that list is great because now we have so much, it's easy to take out. It, it, it's, that's a much easier problem to have is cut out things rather than to having to invent new things and try to plug them in. Um, so yeah, uh, if, uh, I mean, we're in, we're in, uh, we're live on Indiegogo right now, right in the middle of our, uh, campaign. And to be honest, we did completely underestimate the amount of, um, <clears throat> attention, <laughs> you know, outreach you need, uh, to garner such a goal. Uh, our goal is 68 and, uh, 10 of that goes to keeping the studio going for an for a year. So basically, you know, the the office rent or live at home, <laughs> you know, rent um, or work from home rent. Uh, the re uh, 15 of it's going to a, a composer to do all the the music and the original soundtrack for the game. We've got mm -hmm. we've got some awesome people lined up. Uh, we're just waiting to make the decision on who's what, but man, we got some good stuff coming. The guy who does do the music for our current one was an old friend of mine. Uh, we made that music in the basement when we lived, uh, lived together. He, he was a pianist. He teaches out there in Louisville and he had a little toy keyboard and a computer and we were playing around and messing around with things. And yeah, we uh, came out with that and I kept the CD and Four years ago, I called him up. I was like, hey, dude, how you doing? Yeah, I got that CD. You still have it? Do you mind if I use it for this? No, man, go ahead. So uh, it's uh, it's been cool. It's been a crazy adventure. My, uh, my buddy has been paralleling me in comic books. So mm -hmm. while I've been developing my, my prototype, he's been developing his comic book, Star Circuit, and just successfully launched out over there on the uh, on his first day, on his launch day. So... If you guys are into comic books, go check out Star Circuit, sci-fi like Akira. If you like the anime Akira or uh, the game F Zero, you you probably like uh, you'll probably like Star Circuit. So, but yeah, so we basically uh, said, all right. I told him by the time you got done your comic done, I'll have my prototype done. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> so. <laughs> Here we are, and we we are aware that our outreach is, is low. Uh, we're doing everything we can to improve that. We're communicating, guys. I love to talk. You know, you, you want to talk theory. You want to talk. Hey, this didn't look good. You want to talk subliminal? Like, is is there subliminal stuff in this game? I was on a, a guy's channel, Lucifer Storm, a, a UK mm -hmm. comic artist who interviewed me, and you know, he asked that question: Is there anything hidden in your game? <laughs> like, Why did you ask me this question? Yes, of course. No, mm -hmm. I didn't mean. You know. I, but uh, man. Okay, so this is the bar channel, right? Yeah. So uh, you saw the uh, the blue little glag. Uh, we call them glags, the little mm -hmm. blue blobs. Yeah. And they have a mother. Uh, we call her the Miglop. She's mm -hmm. got these claws that yep. uh, unfold. Well, uh, she's a blob, and she'll run up to you. And I wanted that motion of the blob, like going left and right, and you know, floppy. But I and I remember in the Hobbit movie they had like the Goblin King with that growth on his neck and it looked so dis disgustingly beautiful, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna put that on the Miglop and I made, and now it looks like a double set of testicles jogging around every time uh, the Miglop's moving. So it's just those things you can't really unsee once they're there. Um, yeah, totally unintentional, uh, and so yeah, just. Things like that just kind of creep into creative stuff, and you know, if it's a if it's a problem, we'll take it. Out. It is a she, so mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but how did I get lost onto this subject? You're just letting me ramble now. I tend I tend to do <laughs> that. <laughs> as far as, as far I as, can do it. <laughs> as far as reference, look this. Look, I've been doing this for I've been doing this for a while, and this is par for the course. Um, yes, sir. When it comes to when it comes to something like F Zero, all all I'll say is that I love F Zero, but F Zero does not love me back. <laughs> it doesn't love anybody back. Um, now, That's one hard. of the things I saw on the Indiegogo page that I was a bit curious about, yes, sir, and in terms of in terms of how this would be expanded upon, is the um, the skill and spell progression because because of the uh, image that you showed on the page. 
a hunt, all of it's fudged out and it's small and you can't enlarge it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So are we, de are we dealing with a, f are we dealing with a fairly linear approach to advancement? Are we dealing with a more tree based approach? How is, how is it going to work? All right. So I'm going to talk about the lore afterwards. I'll answer mm -hmm. your, your, your question mechanically first. Mechanically, right. I want it to be pretty free form. So, yes, your three main combatants are going to have their slants uh, of what their bonuses are, what their pluses are. Um, but as far as what spells, combos, you know, other uh, like gardening recipes um, or their hunting logs, that will all be dependent on your input and the way you piece them together. So the way that the magic, let's say, for example, uh, there are these crystals. We call them Lodens. Mm -hmm. uh, just to be different, you know, come on, let's go with it. Yeah. And um, so these crystals or these Lodens work off of harmonic resonance. So through the because the whole planet is infused with these uh, Lodens, that are vibrating that is causing a sub or a conscious, you know, entity to form a matrix lattice around the theoretical, the physicist's theoretical E8 lattice that create mm -hmm. that manifests reality. So th through a person mentally tuning their, br their brain frequencies to their load in frequencies, they're able to interact between the E8 and this extra, you know, load and lattice we call the shell uh, or the Shadrea. They're able to cause these magical abilities to happen. So you gather these stones. So you'll find one in the wild while exploring. Chunk went off. Oh, you found a level one combustion shard, you know, combustion load or combustive load. Um, now it, you you have an ability, you can equip it to one of your loading slots. So if you saw in the prototype, you can, you, you know, we intend for you to equip loadings to the D pad and that'll be basically your quick spell switch up. Okay. So, uh, as you have one equip that meet, that's supposed to symbolize your concentrating and tuning to that loading while in combat, ergo, you're able to cast the, the abilities from it. As, but that seems pretty limiting because you've only got four slots. As you progress through the game and you get better at crafting and raising these Lodens, you'll be able to craft amulets, which can hold multiple Lodens, and you can equip one to each slot. This allows you to switch jobs in middle of combat mm -hmm. if things get really weird. So again, I think back to the party management question, like, in the prototype, it's all a single play. It's all just a one party member experience until that last little minute. We have two directions to go to with party management in the battle system. One, just the standard, you know, side by side lineup. Everybody takes a turn based on a speed stat or, you know, a initiative role or, um, or, or a system that we're calling the revolver system. And I don't want to talk about it too much, but it's heavily inspired off of the Chrono Cross uh, mechanical exploit. Uh, the stamina base where you're rotating through characters to uh, basically keep the initiative above the enemies. It's basically how you get the true ending in Chrono Cross uh, mm -hmm. is learning that system. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's ideas we're still looking at going to what people would like to play with most what's going to be more high octane what's you know faster but also manageable you know that's the other thing is right now the timer's constantly rolling and that's mm -hmm. pretty punishing but it keeps you engaged uh we're playing with experimenting on both ways of you know do we give you the ability because you can even pause deer in that we took we took that out you know, <laughs> old Mortal Kombat style. No, once you're in, you've got to go. So uh, that's my brother. <laughs> so he's like, no, Mortal Kombat difficulty. It's like, they're going to hate us. <laughs> so, I, um, <laughs> I have, I have, no, I have nothing against, um, I have nothing against difficulty. 
what I it's just what I needless always, difficulty. <laughs> what I will what I will always have an, what I will always have a beef with is what I re, is what I've come to refer to as hand breaking. Okay. Um. Because the term the term was brought up to me when I needed a alter when I needed a um term for the polar opposite of hand holding. Yeah. Okay. Hand, hand okay, breaking yeah, yeah, is yeah. when the, is when the obstacle to a given situation is so obtuse that there's no way you could have be, been able to figure it out naturally without some sort of um some sort of foreknowledge like reading a guide or something like that. Right. Right. Um, right. Point click adventure games unfortunately have been have been my whipping boy when it comes to this because of some bad <laughs> instances. Um, looking yeah, at you, yeah, 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 yeah. Looking straight at you, King's Quest. You will continue to be my yeah, whipping boy until I'm it. dead. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be bad. I liked Mist. I, I was a big, big, big gamer of Mist and Riven and I, and all. That. I like I like Mist and Riven. Never but played the Lucas. Eggs. The Lucas Arts games, man. Those were. Monkey Island and Full Throttle and all that; those were fun. I'd say, yeah. I'd say, <laughs> I'd say when it comes when it comes to when it comes to unf- the biggest example that always comes to mind when it comes to unfair point and click was Gabriel Knight. Mm. I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad game. I just think that um, it expects me to have a crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> Or the game guide, or something like that. Extra, yeah. Yeah, except there's all there's always the morality question about using about using guides. Yeah, I think back then people were so experimenting. Like you would get games like Mortal Kombat that was being told just the fatalities. They weren't meant to be seen, and then people were finding them, and that's how it was getting popular. I think a few games tried to move in that direction of marketing or design even it's like someone smart's gonna figure it out and then they're gonna tell someone and then it's like was it really smart or was it just really like you're saying obtuse Mm -hmm. you know i'm just really like yeah you yeah i think uh there's been some stumbling blocks along the way of you know finding and you know fine-tuning game development and especially nowadays it's hard to find an original idea anymore you know it it, especially like in it the said, mobile it game said that market. there's only um it said that there's only six stories yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes yeah and now get now getting back getting back to the whole th- now that brings getting back to the whole thing with the crystals you mentioned that you mentioned mm-hmm. that now <laughs> that. Yes, given yes. <laughs> given how given how the uh, given how you have that you have these you have these um, set up and you you seem to you seem to hint at the the idea of job changing. Yep. Now. Oh, I'm not hinting it. I'm telling it. <laughs> <laughs> now. I'm not hinting it. When now when it comes now. Something that, something that um. I c- something that comes to mind is given given the way these given the way these crystals are set up, and I'm going to use the term crystals just for the sake of my own convenience. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I immediately end up thinking of the mate- of the materia. of the materia in yeah. Final Fantasy VII. Yes, and yes, yes. A big pro a a big problem that I had with the materia in in seven and sl- and had this problem slightly less in stuff like Crisis Core or um, FF Seven Remake mm-hmm. is characters being v- um, reduced to vehicles of materia. Right, right. Of course, of course, of course. And is that something that you guys have considered to make sure that that players aren't completely reliant on their on their build when it comes to how, how, did, how did you feel about uh about uh did you ever play final fantasy 12 um yes and their jobs what did you play it before zodiac or after Both. or you know i okay, ha- okay. i have my orig- i have my old copy uh for that was yeah. for the ps2 and i have the yeah zodiac. the metal tin yeah yeah, the and I yeah. have Zodiac on um, PC. Yeah, I, I got it on the Switch. Uh, the uh, I liked how you, you I liked how you could jobify any person to 
serve any role. It allowed a person to role play a, a JRPG a bit differently, more like a Western RPG. Uh, because you can basically like, yeah, if I wanted Balthier to use a sword, he'd use a sword or, but he's always, you know, in the promo images with the gun, you know? So it, I think allowing the system to be flexible like that allows every type of player that gets into these things to maybe find, you know, some, some bit of custom customizability as far as being, you know, oxen for magic loadins so uh the idea was to be able to raise the loadins in combat while you have it you know equipped mm -hmm. you are gaining your charging it per certain actions when you use the spell it depletes the shard if you raise and deplete it too much it has a dexterity and will shatter so there, the idea is that they'll be constantly rotating out amulets will be where you're actually locking them in and we may be extending that you know they're only temporary or they have a dexterity use mm -hmm. uh we may extend that into the amulets again to just keep the rotation and the farming going um, um the way you describe the way you describe it in a weird way i'm reminded of um of the of the of the way weapons were used in dark cloud I never got to play Dark Cloud, but I remember when it came out. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to go back now, and <laughs> now that you bring that up, and, and go back. Uh, it's been one of those celebrated ones. I don't hear too many people talk about it anymore. Well, the, well, yeah, I I am <laughs> very I am very adept when it comes to when it comes to finding the ge the gems. Um, yeah. What and give. Given that, given that, given the approach that you have with the fact that um, crystal use is um, finite, um, the that does that does bring me into the into the job into the job system that you get that you guys have. Mm -hmm. Now, two now um two questions. One is is are you going to be encouraging? A fair a fair amount of jo of job switching and two are are you, do you have systems in place to to it to um curtail choice paralysis <sighs> good one uh the choice paralysis part yet we have not been able to test just yet mm -hmm. but the other systems uh yeah, we we do want to encourage the job switching. Uh, in fact, I'm wanting a, a boss particularly to be part of that, to, you know, tutorial. I mean, you're already going to be past the tutorial at that point, but I believe every enemy is going to be testing you on certain part of the mechanics to evolve you all the way through the story. Uh, so each boss is going to be building on more mechanics, more mechanics all the way through the game. So, um that way you're always getting that progression field, you know? Uh, so yeah, by that final boss, we're hitting you with every, every mechanic that you can. So job switching, it, it occurs when, you know, we've got a, a character that's, you know, petrified or scared or fogged or, you know, we may, that might've been our depleted character fly, you know, and the other one might on the fly have an amulet that's equipped, maybe giving the option for so many, amulets to be equipped at once maybe that would start getting boggy on the system mm -hmm. so we could limit amulets to lesser than that and keeping that rather tight um you know uh i think that was a very good question but yeah yeah it's de it's definitely something i could i could see because mm -hmm. as temp as tempting as it is to go to go full to go full free form um, i really wanted in the beginning to keep it you know these three characters but it was just uh, or their their particular styles you were bringing up their jobs i think you might uh we're about to jump into that sorry i interrupted but you know the those three main job types i the healer girl again you know and that's she's got a little knife i want her to be uh i've got an idea to make her an offensive healer so it's like what would you be doing with that like draining stuff you know dispersing the energy differently you know like uh vampirism type uh type mechanics if you get what i'm saying like life drains um it's funny you mentioned she, that because i was playing i was playing heretic this morning 
<laughs> Man, that's an old one too. I love that one. Oh. Uh, I'm I'm a big Planescape tournament guy too. You'd um, you'd probably you'd probably get a kick out of Numenera. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I've got it. Oh. <laughs> I I got to get through pillars first. <laughs> um, but the 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 thing the thing is is that I I've had a um. For me, I've had a bit of a I've had a bit of a formula when it comes to when it comes to customization. Mm -hmm. The the um more the less playable characters that one is reasonably gonna have, the the um t the tighter leash has to, there has to be on customization. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that I think that's the reason why I have that whole vehicles problem with um. With say F with say FF seven, yeah. Because because of the fact that by the end game you have, um, you oh, have yes. like not you have like nine or nine or so fully free fully free form characters. Yeah. And, yeah, it's a little it's a little much. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And you you comp you contrast that with say, Suikoden. Yeah. A, se a series that a series that I love, even if it has one of the biggest bastards when it comes to a main vil when it comes to the main villain in any um RPG I've had to deal with. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, Luca. I still What's hate you. Favorite? Which one's your favorite? Well, as far as far as Su as far as Sui Coden, yes. yes. Um, I'd say I'd say it. I'd say it's a I'd say it's a tie between two and three. I yeah. do think I do want to give special mention to four because four gets way too much shit than it deserves, <laughs> and I am a, I am a bit bitter that that um that that Sui Coden game that was on the PSP never came stateside because it looked very interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the 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 individual customization in the Sui Coden games is small. And this is to, this is to balance out the fact that you have potentially a hundred and eight characters that are that are playable. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, but, go ahead, go ahead. So, no, 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 you go ahead, you go ahead, sir. And of of course, you look at you look at a lot of um, you look at a lot of um PC style um RPGs where for where for all intents and purposes you're going to be controlling one character, and that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And care and customization and builds can go all over the place. Just look at say um, Diablo mm -hmm. to ca to kind of get, especially Diablo two, to kind of get an idea yeah, where yeah, I'm going yeah, with yeah. with all the builds that can be done with a single class. Yeah. And that and that's kind that's kind of where, that's kind of where I'm going where I'm going at with this balancing of of customizations because. Obviously, having things a little free form is a good way to make sure things don't get repetitive. But you don't want to have people angsting over whether or not a choice they make at a certain juncture is going to bite them in the ass a few chapters later. Correct, correct. So uh, there is a moment where our mechanics are going to split the characters up into single units to basically solve a level puzzle or an environment puzzle. Uh, it's a risk to do that because, well, at that point, your characters are just now starting to utilize the, the amulets. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're up to snuff and you've been doing everything pretty much you know, by the book at this point, when your characters leave each other, they don't have each other's back anymore. If they get into battles, they'll be on their own. So it does kind of lend itself to... Uh, maybe too much of a conveniency uh and i'm with you on that uh again i i did say that the, each character would have their own base stat slanted mm -hmm. to be more powerful in certain ways so if you're going to optimize you know then yeah you're going to build these characters to those you know to those archetypes or to those classes you know the best you can uh but if you're in a bond yeah. so uh Um, and that's the other thing. Like I said, I wanted to kind of streamline the storyline to keep the game at a manageable size for us. Uh, we're anticipating 20 hours mm -hmm. um, by the end of the game. Uh, and that's if you're uh, 
basically trudging right through it. Maybe, a, you know, maybe eight hour hiccups here and there. Maybe. <laughs> no, no, hopefully we're writing it better than that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, give or take about 20 hours. Uh, but we want there to be completionists. We mm-hmm. want there to be like, if we want to level these characters all the way up and get all of these, uh, these abilities for all of them. Sure. The trick to the, uh, do they have all of these abilities all at once? No, not in the main combat. Like that comes back to equipping, which load in allows you to do which combos, which counter combo and of, As he said, especially you know, I like what they did with the remake. Hate me, kill me, but I I love the system. I'm not I'm not going to hate for. <laughs> gonna, yeah. Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing to keep in mind. We do here. Yeah. We do things a little bit different here in the temple. That's fine. Um. As and speaking of different, I um, I ended up getting a bit of a chuckle when it came to when it came to Tauj is um main wep main weapon in the proof of concept. Okay. You know, a lot of times, a lot of times, like whenever it comes to whenever it comes to fan whenever it comes to fantasy melee weapons, we tend to see very famil- very familiar approaches. You know, long sword, bro- um, broad so- broad sword, some somewhere in yeah. between. Um, very Euro- very European. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, in yeah. this case, you went with a um, what's effectively an oversized kukri. Yeah! 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 yeah. I've got one. <laughs> I own a lot of swords and a lot of knives. Uh, but yeah, uh, Kukri. It, uh, now, Taj is a uh, 11-year-old kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, that Kukri is a you know, hardened, hardened like a substance in this alien planet. So yeah. it works much like a blade. It does look like a crystal, but, um, but yeah. What was, <laughs> what was your... <laughs> You got oversized kukri. All right, so what's up? <laughs> yeah, I, I just I just found what I was just curious if it, if that was if you wanted to go with that because you wanted to go with a different kind of melee weapon or if um if a ri- or if in original documents it was a more standardized um sword. Uh it just in the world building how the three characters actually gear up in a in an area mm-hmm. it is just kind of there it's a convenient thing that he finds that's part of the guards equipment in one of the villages mm-hmm. uh so taj is wearing an outfit that they basically doesn't fit him the entire game <laughs> uh but so everything's got it, yeah so it's a makeshift weapon for him yeah uh it could be used as a large like uh, machete type uh, type planting gardener's tool, you yeah. know, in the village or something, or like I was saying, a guard sidearm. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's where I, you chuckled at it though. So I was like, uh, kind of interested in that. What was the chuckle for? Um, a, bit, a bit of the reaction, and all, the other the it's it's oftentimes the little details that I can't that I end up no, that I end up noticing. Um, mm-hmm. th- and that includes the way the um, sheath is set up. Yeah, on the back, so you would expect it to kind of fall out, right? Well, I think. Fi- well, um, I'm pretty. Sh- I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure some of the people who are fixated on realism would say would say that. But um, it's got a latch on it. <laughs> given, but given how. Well, one, I can't. I kind of fig. I kind of figured that out. Yeah. <laughs> and two, we. How many t- How many times over the years have we had a Have we had a sword just magnetically attached to someone's back? Is it magnetically attached? I'm be. I'm being semi sarcastic with the magnetism part. <laughs> like, they, so like cloud sword. <laughs> I would. I would use that, but. Um, <laughs> but they're act. But. The, there actually is a magnet on the soldier uniform, so that doesn't count. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, and I can't. And I was going, and I can't use say I can't use say um, guts either because there's right. because there's a la- there's a latch on his armor. Mm-hmm. Never, yeah, never mind the fact right that 
as, <laughs> as has been made very clear, the dragon we need to call slayer. Chad adversity. Is that what we need? We need Chad adversity. Out I'd here rather not this. call him in. <laughs> I'd rather not call. I'd rather not call him in and and have him and have him defile my temple. Um, I um. I no, know. I love this. I love this. Keep going. This is I, great. <laughs> look, my a big thing about my philosophy is that I prefer believability over realism. Like whenever whenever someone argues about this or that in the, in a fantasy setting being unrealistic, I I often have to go. You're you're barking up the wrong tree. Right, right, look, right, right. I um, I watch a I watch a fair amount of. I watch a fair amount of amount of uh, lucha libre, and mm, yeah. there's some, and there's some ridiculousness in that, or in some of the crazier ends of Japanese wrestling. Mm -hmm. But if you present it in a way that I'm will that I'm willing to go with it, then I don't then I don't mind because I can mm -hmm. because it's the good old suspension of disbelief. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's for it's for that reason that I think I think you. I think you can use if realism is used to enhance, then it's perfectly fine. But when, but, but when it isn't, and it's just, and it's just used for somebody to be the to act like they're the smart guy in the room, they're really not. That's, I think one I think one of the classic examples of this was was somebody spending way too much time trying to figure out if the weapon triangle in Fire Emblem is realistic or not. <laughs> right. Right. Isn't that what the new game, uh, Triangle... Uh, triangle strategy? Triangle I've, 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 strategy uh... I have been seeing I've been seeing that claim getting bandied about having to... I didn't even have to play the game to, to know that Triangle strategy has nothing in common with Fire Emblem. It's got yeah, more in yeah, common yeah. with... With FF tactics and ogre battle, honestly. <laughs> oh man, ogre battle! The tears I've had in that one. <laughs> <laughs> the tears yeah. and the and the queen so, references. So yeah, like I, I love I love like exploring like things I may have uh, maybe wasn't so self aware about. Mm -hmm. I, I'm about to because now I'm self conscious. Yeah. Uh, so the back sheath sword thing. You think I was. Possibly, I might be reading this wrong. Possibly trying too hard for the realism. It came off goofy. I, no, I no, I don't think I, it's it's nothing <laughs> like that. It's more of me appreciating the li the little details in things. Oh, okay, sir. I am sorry I misread yeah. you. I am too I'm too defensive. Thank you very much for noticing that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> like yeah. the little laces and everything. Do you oh to draw all yeah. those and make them <laughs> animate? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the. I'm pretty sure getting all these squares on that on that bit of lameller was was a pain in and of itself. It, it but it's a love of bad. Like uh, I love doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, like that little kid in me looking at the screen, going, "I want to make those graphics," is very at the forefront of my mind every time I'm working on these things. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice in some of the animations, like. Uh, like in Taj's uh, low health animation, he's rubbing his shoulder. It's not just breathing. His his thumbs moving across the injury. I've got Anel holding her uh, staff and knife, and her fingers are adjusting. Lane's every piece of fabric on Lane, and everything's flopping around, and he's as he's swinging that 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 slingshot. So mm -hmm. I'm just I'm wanting to put the details for the people who care to look. Yeah, you know, because that's what I did. I looked at these things. I, I kept look getting closer to the screen and looking and being like, how much care and detail are put into these things. So in that prototype, the very environment that you're running around, did you notice any repetition in the stones or in the rock work? Because there's none. That's all <laughs> hand drawn, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I intend to do the same thing everywhere. I mean, I always say it's it's. 98% of it or 96% of it is not repeatable. The things that would be would be like the chests, the little decor decorations, like a rug here, just mm -hmm. things to clutter, you know, that gets it lived in pretty fast for, yep. you know, me to, me to push out. But yeah. So I'm glad you noticed the details. Oh, um, and of, of course, um, a slingshot is not a ranged weapon that we, that, that um, people see getting a whole lot of use e either. No, uh, he also has a set of gauntlets or these uh, 
you know, Devonis gauntlet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's going to be our hand to hand pugilist as well as our range. So his defensive and co- like in combos, his turn break combos are going to be utilizing his fists, you know, his, his legs a bit more uh, when the enemy's attacking him, of course, you know, and then of course he'll be, you know, throwing, throwing his uh, projectiles that are magic imbued from a distance. Although um, that, that does be, that does beg a question given given the okay. um, combat that I had experienced. Even when it comes to ranged weapons, is there still is there still that attitude of left, right, and center, or is there a different yes. approach? There would be a. I, I, to be honest with you, I <laughs> back to exploring few different type of mechanics. We have doing it one way, like the directional, to test that out because the enemies we plan to have them blocking you too. Like right now in the prototype, it's just you blocking them. Mm-hmm. But uh, to ramp up, you know, a little bit of the tactics is you could be blocked too and turn broken as well. Uh, so uh, the uh, I'm sorry, I got lost in that. What was the original question? Um, it's more more of the the whole le- the whole left, right, and center when it comes oh, to right, angles right, right, and attack right. is yeah. that going to play to ranged attack as well as to melee? I would like for it to, as I said, because the enemies will be blocking. You know, or have the ability to block directionally, but I'm I'm wanting to differentiate the combat between the three characters just enough to make them feel independent. Mm-hmm. So it worked the same mechanic, like playing it, the same tactics, but as it's uh, as as far as how those tactics are going to be put together to uh, cause him to attack, like is he going to be rapid firing each direction? Is it going to be charging up a magic attack and then you know by pressing three buttons, you know. Uh, that's where getting these two characters into the engine and exploring with their mechanics is going to be a uh, part of a uh, part of more of a, what we're doing in development, you know? So uh, we want to keep updating, uh, giving the public an updated version of a prototype as we progress. So, but we tried to push this one as far as we could before it started breaking too much on us. So we're, we already have the new one planned up. We already have it structured out. We're just trying to get it funded and get our under the hood unreal guy with us. And we'll start getting that new system set up and new, you know, get the other two characters in there and we'll get to explore around and we'll probably put that out for everyone to try out and give us your inputs on. So yeah, uh, I, the originally I wanted to do to use lane more as a caster. So, but I loved the idea of him, rapid firing these you know projectiles as well so i would think certain type of loadings would give him certain type of abilities or combos some that would be charging up large spells you know you know just using an attack you know turn rather than a skill turn Mm -hmm. or just moving right over into like rapid fire combo type stuff so one two three and then he does like a you know a a combo finisher fourth so Yeah, it's, we're exploring it. <laughs> that, that's def- that's definitely um, that's definitely one way. That's definitely one way to put to to go about it. And um, all things considered, I can definitely see the um, the the Chrono Cross influence, especially when it comes to the use of the use of color. Mm-hmm. Um. As far as the elemental representations, and a little overdone, I would I would think my my initial or original approach to doing the magic system was going to be more arcane based, uh, rather than the elemental and the it's run to death in my personal opinion. But through working things out and trying to make sure that I put together a good system. You know that uh, that that plays well, rather than like you were saying before. You're just trying too hard to be cool, bro. You know, like I didn't I didn't want to try an arcane system without it. You know, really having some smart, really smart people behind mm-hmm. behind something like that. So yep. I went with my gut and what I've been experienced mo- most with playing. You know, the Final Fantasy type games or you know those JRPGs. They mm-hmm. they use the the, the elemental system a lot. I've tried to put our own spin to it, you know, and we, uh, the other thing about the spell system while we're talking about it is we want to do a cause and effect law system. So 
in the demo, you're able to play or uh, cast this large spell called Sunder, which is superly overpowerful for it. But hey, we, mm-hmm. you know, we want you to have fun. In the game, you would have to be pretty high level, like getting to about level 40, 45 to be able to cast that spell, you know, just offhand. But it will be required to use that spell for certain things. So how do you do that? You're layering spells and stacking them. So you'll cast a cause spell and maybe another cause spell to cause a reaction there. And then a third one to cause the major one or just two spells to cause and react. But there will be a rule system of how those spells interact. So um, that I thought would be kind of fun to allow the player to really live out that power fantasy if they're learning the rules of the world. Yep, and it's de- it's definitely something I'll I'll be looking forward to your to uh, your guys' particular take. And and even more so given the. Um, Given the world that you've sh- that you've um, presented with the with di- with the maps of Devonis, mm-hmm. so uh, the uh, the map is rather large. You see, it's a it's a full world map. It's got names. I've got my uh, Silmarillion, uh, basically on how all those kingdoms and sections and everything were formed. Uh, the uh, but Beckon is the Hobbit to my Lord of the Rings trilogy that I have planned for this IP and for this world. Um, so it's an introduction. Uh, and like in Lord of the Rings, I mean, that whole trilogy took place in only one small part of, you know, um, Arda, the planet, you know, uh, of Middle Earth is in. It, it only happens in one small section. So Beckon. Because, again, like I'm saying, I wanted to streamline that storytelling and kind of keep the game at a, at a workable scale for us to put out properly and, and, and with good quality. We're moving through the map like Mario and Mario Land, or, you know, Super Mario 3, you know, node to node. Uh, but we're moving through one small section of the eastern continent of Arlea. Um, and so we'll be moving from Burketh and on up... Uh, into Tula Banya, uh, this, you know, giant tree city, another trope. I believe tropes are good. They're tropes because they were good, but there's a lot of people that write them bad. I get that. I'm hoping not to be one of them. <laughs> so um, I, do, um, <laughs> I, um, I'll, I will level with you. I hate, I hate the, ter- I hate the way the term trope is bandied about because whenever I, whenever I see it done that way, um, it comes off as somebody who th- who thinks that because that because they read a few articles on TV tropes that that means they under they understand how this works like they can pretend to be a, the jaded academic and moreover yeah. the reason why I can't I can't stand um, the way people talk about tropes is they're reducing a story to bullet points. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And. As There's I've... so much more alive than that, especially if you're writing them. Like that's the thing is like I'm I'm writing this thing and it's coming to life as it's boiling up, and I'm moving things from here. They were oh that's so much better over here and over here, and then oh yeah, it's, ah, there's just so much more to it than yeah. Than, Art than... is not a math problem, right? Right. Uh, yes, it's it's an expression of the tools. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yep. And with now, um, given that, given that, are you, are you guys, pl- are you guys planning a, um, a sec, a second, ki- a second kind of, um, kind of vertical slicer pro- or prototype down the line? Yes, I am. Uh, uh, I mean, we are. Yeah, totally. It's. Uh, I think. I- I was just kind of talking about that is like, that's our, our next step is to take uh, first. Our next step is to raise the funds, um, but we'll be adding um, an unreal under the hood guy to help uh, make sure everything is running as optimum and as built, you know, optimally as possible. Dwight is going right in there and smashing these systems out. I've been able to make all of our arrays, all of our lists. Uh, I've been drawing the, you know, the the relationship and the, you know, the 
the, the logic charts out for all that. Um, and so, and we played with uh, a lot of blueprints. That's what, that's what he's using in Unreal to do a lot of this is blueprints. So the visual scripting part of Unreal. So he's having a lot of fun with that, but that's where the Unreal engineer comes in because he can actually go back in, make sure everything's running the best that it can. Um, especially with like things like plugins and when you're needing to customize some of those blueprints, you know, in C and C++, you really need to need a guy who knows how Unreal's running. Um, but yeah, uh, we, that's my intention is put out another prototype, you know, uh, probably about midway through development and put it back out there and see how people are thinking. And then a third and final, you know, demo before release, you know, so we'll, uh, We'll be maturing. You may be seeing more or a lot of the same, just you know, as far as environment stuff. But more likely, by the by the time we're gonna put out the next prototype, there will be more stuff to be seen. And I, like I said, my, we tried to we tried to go back in and do some stuff. Like I really don't like our battle transition, like going from explorer state to battle. I don't like uh, how it is currently, but those are mechanically some techniques that we're exploring on to use a technique that actually makes that feel seamless. Like the camera swooping down behind the characters from overhead mm -hmm. and make it feel like it's swooping down behind them. So we need to preload the battles for that, uh, making sure that they load in real quick instead of, uh, instead of that very, you know, archaic way of, okay, now we're loading the battle now. So, We'll have them preloaded. That's uh, kind of in our, our that's in our architecture plan right now. So uh, yeah, I just we just can't wait to start getting back into that. <laughs> so all this promotion and stuff is kicking my butt, <laughs> but you got to do it. Yep. Well, it it is what it is what it is, and I with that in mind, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come to come onto the show and enjoy the insanity at play here. Oh, I want to be around more often if I'm welcome. Uh, you know, I, I want to know what this bar is all about. Well, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Excellent. All right. Well, I've been on water today, but next time it might be sake. Yeah. A man of culture. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>